Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Is that not clear? For ye are bought with a price. What, what kind of price? The blood of Jesus Christ. He paid for you. I mean, what if you were to you know, buy something and then someone takes it from you? That would kind of uh, be like buying your tooth in half or something, right? You kind of get a little disturbed about that. I'm telling you, God has bought us with a price, and Satan wants to come steal us from him. So when we're to buy, or if I were to, so I'm going to steal my truck, and someone stole it. Um, there's no insurance down here. Uh, if you see what I'm saying, we have insurance now, I could just get another vehicle. But God's bought us with a price, and Satan can steal us from the Lord. God doesn't take out an insurance policy on us. He's paid for us in full. You know what I mean? So Satan knows that he can take us and make us waste our whole lives. I can attest to wasting my life. The majority of my life is going to burn up in the fire. I don't, I don't have nothing but um, it's going to be bad. So I might, might as well redeem the time I have left. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. They are God's. 1 Corinthians 7, 23, ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Oh, here's another football one. <clears throat> I don't hate football, you know, or people that watch football, but I think it's a good illustration to use football because we all enjoy it. Well, some, <clears throat> I don't watch football anymore, I'll be honest. But I'm not going to say, hey, I'm not, I'm not fellowshipping with you because you watch football. So don't, don't think that. Well, it's a good illustration. All right. Be not the servants of men. When you're cheering for someone, your team, you're faithful to them. You're serving them. When, uh, when, the, when the king, when he's walking down the road, he has servants following him, doing everything he has. The reason they play football, they because they know people are going to watch and spend their time. Don't be a servant of man. <clears throat> No man can serve two masters. Right. When you're when you're watching that movie, you're not watching Christ. That's right. Amen. Literally speaking, I mean, yes, it's, it's our choice. You know, you can watch a movie. It may not be a sin. Or is it? You can watch football. It may it may not be a sin. Um, but how are you gonna spend your time? That's right. What's going to be worth it in the end? Matthew twenty three ten, neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. Romans ten fourteen through seventeen. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed, and how shall they believe in him, of whom they have not heard, of whom they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher? Right. How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? Brother Josh, you got a burden, right? I believe God was sending you. See what I'm saying? God wants to send you. But um, I tell you, if you leave that phone off the hook, he can't talk to you. You put this Bible up, don't use it. God can't talk to you. If your flesh has overwhelmed you, he can't say, hey, I want to send you somewhere. So that old flesh, well, I know I'm going to football game today, Lord. <clears throat> I hope it's convicting. It is me. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. This, these verses right here, Romans 10, 14 through 17, is what I read before that, that Saturday morning. And that, man, I got a good feeling on that one. The Lord hit me with it. Where it says, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. God looks at that, at the, the most disgusting part of your body, and says it's beautiful. You go preach.
preach that gospel of peace. You can't do it if you're not sanctified. If you're not sanctified in your life, you won't want to go. If you're not being a living sacrifice, if you're dying, if you de if you're dead, as soon as you leave that church, you can't hear God. He can't send you if you're dead. Amen. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Zach heard us. He heard God's word. Therefore, faith came. It's that easy. Jeremiah, I like to say that we're God's mouthpiece. Jeremiah 49, 14. I have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent unto the heathen. Anyone here been sent to the heathen? We are ambassadors sent to the heathen, a lost world. We are we're pilgrims here, we're, we're foreigners. We're aliens in this world. God has saved us, put his spirit in, in us. To do, to, because we have a mission. It's to represent our king in this foreign world. That's why we're here. Right. There's no other reason. No other reason. Right. And the more you sanctify your life and live righteously, the better an ambassador you can be. In the end, all that matters is are you giving your king's message to the lost? And being righteous and sanctification builds you up to be a better ambassador. That's all. That's the only reason we're here, to win souls, to save the lost. Right. Amen. <clears throat> 2 Kings 19, 7. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor, and shall return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. This is the first appearance of rumor. Let me say it one more time. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor. Rumor in the Bible is the first occurrence of the rumor in the Bible, and it follows the words, I will send a blast upon him. So a rumor here is a blast, um, <clears throat> which brings to mind, for the word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's quick and powerful like a blast. That's it. Faith cometh by hearing. That blast. It's the only way people get saved is hearing this word. Right. Piercing their hearts. God wants us to you wants us to be that mouthpiece so he can share uh, that rumor, can get to people, so we can blast it upon the lost. Right. Street preaching, man. Rear back and blast. Amen. That's it. Amen. <clears throat> We have been sent of the heathen, the lost, to proclaim our, our king's words. Matthew 8, 28, 19 through 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Well, the new versions change that to age. I wonder why. End of this age. God leaves us. He won't be with us anymore. Oh, anyway. Second Corinthians five eighteen. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. The new modern churches—they're trying to get God. They're saying, God, will you just reconcile to us, please? Um, we're gonna bring rock music in and all the worldly stuff because right. we, we want God to reconcile to us. But I tell you that this word says God wants us to be reconciled to him. Amen. So when that old flesh says, I'm tired of these hymns, I'm tired of this old King James Bible, it takes study until they even learn anything. We don't, God doesn't have to be reconciled to us. Right. He wants us to be reconciled to him, stick with the old paths, <clears throat> and be peculiar. Amen. Romans 5.10, For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. 2 Corinthians 5.19, To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. He committed it to us. Right. We're about to say, hey, hey, lost, 
His, there's, here's how you get reconciled. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's it. We don't go out there and say, hey, come to church. We got a rock group coming. That's not it. <clears throat> Reconcile the world to himself. 1 Peter 2, 1, 2, 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, us, strangers and pilgrims in this world, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Sanctify yourselves unto the Lord. Abstain from fleshly lust. <laughs> the more you fit in with this world, the less you're a stranger and pilgrim to it. Abstain from fleshly lust will cause you to be a pilgrim in this world. People are like, wow, that guy's peculiar. That religion he has must be real. Let me go talk to him about it. Standing on the street, someone got saved. We didn't go to him. He came to us. Um, later, after he got saved, there were some devil. I mean, some, uh, <laughs> some, I don't know if maybe they're saved. I hope they're saved. But some, some women who were dressed like the world with short shorts on who came up and talked to Brother Josh. Um, you know, why, you know, they wanted to help us on the streets, hold signs, or they probably want to street preach, the women do. But um, that's not reconciling God. That's not representing God's word. That goes against God's word. Right. A woman dressed like that, they're not sanctifying their lives. And guess what? God didn't use them right then. Um, but Brother Josh told him, <laughs> what did he tell him? I told him that. Amen. Um, they probably would, would have wore yoga pants, so even then they couldn't have helped us. Right. And they probably would have wanted to preach. I don't know. I hope they're saved. Amen. But when you get away from this book, this King James Bible, you stop. You don't care about sanctification because you have to admit that your your book's not perfect. Right. I'm telling you, this book, this pure Word of God, King James Authorized Bible. Is perfect. Yes, sir. What happens when you when you read something that's perfect? You indulge something that's perfect. You desire to be perfect. Right. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Where was I? Redeeming the time. This is big. Something I'm trying to do a better job at. Redeeming the time. Um, the Lord's helped me to come out of watching TV. Um, know staying up playing video games or stuff that's gonna burn up in the fire right it may not be a sin but I plead with you consider in your life what's gonna burn up in the fire and change that right Amen. redeem the time <clears throat> Romans 1 9 29 through 32 I hope this is convicting it was for me um, TV is a good example so I'll use an example here Romans 1, 29-32 being filled with all unrighteousness fornication, wickedness covetousness, maliciousness full of envy murder, debate, deceit malignity, right. whisperers backbiters, haters of God, despiteful Amen. proud, boasters, inventors of evil things disobedient to parents Without natural, under, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. You remember all that? Okay, that's a lot to remember. But uh, think about TV. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Right. <clears throat> Paying 15 bucks to watch um, a movie. It could be a, movie, a rated R movie all the way to, down to G. Most of those G movies about kids being be disobedient to their parents. Right. Being whispers, backbiters, debate, deceit, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things. I love Discovery Channel, man. That thing's awesome. I like watching those. 
<laughs> but hey, in the end, it's about redeeming the time. Right. It's between you and the Lord what you what you put before your eyes. And I mean, there's TBN is as wicked as as anything else. Yeah. Um, there's some good stuff to watch though. Maybe I don't know. I don't watch TV. Maybe there's some good stuff on TV. Um, if it's edifying, go for it. If you can stand before God and say, and and not burn up in the fire, then go for it. Um, that's a good rule of thumb. Just be like, Lord, would this burn up in the fire right now? We don't want to be standing behind you waiting for your fire to die down. So please. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Seriously, though. The Bible says, have pleasure in them that do them. This makes me think of Hollywood. Just from my notes. How it is filling people's homes with uncleanness. Christians won't murder someone in the flesh, yet they will have pleasure in them that will through watching television. Amen. That's the truth. That's the honest truth. Sir. You think about before TV. Revivals every night. People go on the street corners. Women dressing modestly. When that TV came in, the whole I was set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the word for those that turn aside shall not cleave unto me. I'll put that aside. Think about it. This country started going down. Yeah, That's right. When television came out. And again, it can be used for good. I'm not I'm not saying it can't. But um you look at the heart of who's producing what they're watching. And even the even the Christians who make make movies or whatever, they're not perfect. They're, you know. Um, anyways, take a, if you want to stick with TV, it's between you and God. But um, I would say be prayed up and stay in this book more than you watch TV or whatever. All right. I'm I'm only harping on this because I don't watch TV. I I, I actually can. Say, hey, it's wrong to watch TV. Amen. Um, praise the Lord, I finally have something. I'm, I can't, I can't be, I won't be a hypocrite about it. Right. Thank the Lord. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave unto me. That's still in the Bible. Yes, sir. It's still there. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. That's what I'm trying to do. Amen. For unfruitful works of darkness. And we, I, I might just do a study on TV one day. Just to, you know, if I get kicked out. <laughs> First Thessalonians 5.22 Abstain from all appearance of evil. All appearance. See, the standard for salvation is simple. It's a narrow road. You can't miss it. It's Jesus Christ. The shed blood of Jesus Christ. Just get on that narrow road. You don't have to worry about wondering while you're on the road. It's that easy. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The justification, that's justification by faith alone. And then comes sanctification. This is the part that we struggle with because we, we still live in this body, this bag of flesh. Right. Um, if, you, if you compare uh, your vehicle to the flesh, like Brother Josh, this vehicle broke down on the way here. Um, the Bible says, be, be careful to maintain good works. With your vehicle, be careful to maintain maintain your vehicle. God has a purpose for you breaking down. See, if you don't if you don't check your tires every so often for good maintenance, you're going to blow out one day. If you don't keep up with that Bible, keep reading it, spiritually speaking, that flesh is going to have a blowout. Amen. Um, <clears throat> TV can be a devil. It can be. It, it can drain you of your precious time. That God, it's a gift. Time is a gift. We don't we don't deserve it. <laughs> and God gives it to us abundantly. How are we going to use that time? He graciously has allotted us that time, and we're in a lost and dying world. And the devil wants us to waste all of our precious seconds on him. He wants to steal us from the Lord, being purchased by God already, to be ineffective, to be an unfaithful messenger. 
here's a quote from Brother James Knox, um, and it's how to be called in the ministry. He's pretty much trying to get people to see what it takes to be a good um, minister in God's in the church. And listening to it, you're like, man, this is nothing about being called to be a pastor. But uh, <clears throat> he says, look at 1 Corinthians 9, 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Then he says, you need to learn, young man, you need to learn, young lady, to control your appetite and to control your desires. You need to learn to go to bed late and get up early. You need to learn to push the plate away. You need to learn that you do, don't have to get up to get a drink every time the thought crosses your mind. We don't realize how much the flesh controls our lives. Right. We're not thirsty, but that old flesh, like, oh, I can't wait to get a Red Bull. But, <laughs> hey, thank you for being a good example, or bad example. <laughs> um, seriously, man, we're all struggling with this, with this flesh. Um, Brother James, good man. Um, I'd point anyone to him. Um, we all have that one that one preacher, and we're, man, we'd love to pattern ourselves after that. Um, staying up late, getting up early. It's, it's basically saying, flesh, I don't care how tired you're going to tell me you are. I'm going to stay up late to study this word. Amen. I'm going to get up early to keep studying it, and before I go off to work or whatever it may be, put that old flesh down. Um, and when we get to heaven, there will be no more, you won't be tired anymore, so you'll be glad that you spent all that time awake. Serving the Lord. It's a little radical, but it can be done. It's, right. um, so I beseech you all to um, work on sanctification through God's word that we may be an ambassador for the Lord so that the lost and dying world may hear the gospel and um, get saved. That's all that matters in the end. Right. It's salvation. Amen. Can't do it if you're too busy for the Lord. If you're too busy, watch them doing whatever. Um, so thank God for this time and for His Word. And I'd like to pray myself out of here. Thank you, Lord, for your precious Word. And um, for giving me the opportunity, Lord, to talk about you. And I beseech you, Father, um, help us all, Father, through your Word, to be better ambassadors, um, that we may sanctify ourselves unto you that we may represent you well, Lord, and uh, get the gospel out to the lost. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Brother Andrew. Amen. My grandpa's going to come and sing here.